Et pour nos francophones, euh, on a ici euh, notre médecin communautaire d'Ottawa, euh, Dr. Chris Allen Shoemaker. Merci, merci beaucoup. <laughs> Hello everyone. What a day. What a two years. It's been awful. But it didn't need to be quite as awful. We could have had other measures in place and being actively used right from the beginning. But only now is the information coming out, and it's pretty sad. But let's go, some, I'd like to go back to some happier memories of mine. I was emergency doc for 25 years. Some of it in Ottawa, some of it in Vancouver and Kelowna. So I know emergency medicine. I know the need to say hello, to meet, greet and treat our patients. And among the things that I did, I put chest tubes in car accident victims, I diagnosed heart attacks, I saved patients from overdose. But very importantly, as ER docs, we started antibiotics or antiviral therapies for infectious disease patients. As I say, we lumped all of our activities in which we might see 35 patients in a day or a shift into the following mantra. Meet them, greet them, treat them, and treat them. Because hopefully a lot of our patients got to go home and they were well enough and they didn't have to come into the hospital. But of the four things I mentioned, the most important thing was to treat. What use is it to go to a medical doctor if they can't treat you? We need to let the doctor and the patient together decide what is the best acceptable treatment to reduce the stress and risk of their active infection. Other doctors were on the stage about two hours ago. They're marvelous people. They're heroes to me. They're specialized individuals who have been able to point out that significant treatments, which were very safe, were not allowed to be used. If these medications were used in the pre-thrombosis stage, hospitalizations were virtually completely avoidable. You know what these two baseline medications are. You followed the news, or when you can get it from sources that aren't too bizarre. Ivermectin and hydroxychloroquine were proven by high-level U.S. military researchers to be massively effective against SARS-CoV-1. That was known in 2016. 2016, all of the agencies knew that the best antivirals sitting there ready to go if there was ever a viral pandemic were hydroxychloroquine and ivermectin. These just didn't come into the picture a couple of years later or in the midst of the pandemic. They were completely known in 2016. But a certain doctor named Fauci in the south of us, he wanted to ignore it. He had personal reasons for wanting to ignore it. He had personal reasons for wanting to hide the source and the mechanism of this pandemic occurring. And so he and others went to great lengths to say that antiviral treatments just shouldn't be used. And they put out fake information involving its lack of safety, and it was completely fake. I prescribed hydroxychloroquine 35 years ago to patients going to Vietnam who wanted to not get uh, uh, malaria. So they took it for four weeks. They took that drug for four weeks, they and their children, to safely not get malaria. They all came back happy, had a lovely holiday. No sickness, no heart complications. Hydroxychloroquine has been safe for decades. Ivermectin is also a form of an antiviral, although it works by a different mechanism. But again, the US military researchers found it to be safe, spoke to its safety, and recommended its use if there was ever a pandemic of a COVID type. You don't think this is a COVID type? I think we've been told for two years this is a COVID type infection, right? Well, the proof was there that it was perfectly safe. And my next set of heroes from out of the United States have been using it aggressively.
These names you will know, Dr. Pierre Corey, internist, USA. Dr. Peter McCullough, cardiologist, USA. Dr. Mary T. Bowden, fabulous intensive care specialist, Houston, USA. Dr. Bowden has saved about a thousand patients through her pre-hospital clinic and continues to do to this moment. Now they're smart people. They're smart enough for me to respect their opinions and their reasons for having their opinions. You're smart people because you've observed and you know some of the things that they've told you on the internet or YouTube or wherever they've managed to get the message out to. But it doesn't need to be that way. There's many countries where it's being used aggressively and appropriately. Sorry for having to be people who use notes, but you know, unaccustomed as I am to public speaking. Here's a bit more truth. The following countries have allowed ivermectin to be used regularly in their population. India, Argentina, Brazil, Japan, among others. And in the case of Japan, would you say it's a fairly advanced country? You know, they're able to run an Olympics. They've got an incredible downtown and a city of 18 million people. I think they're pretty sophisticated. Well, eight months ago, when the government finally said to their physicians, we encourage you to actively use ivermectin in the safety of this pandemic. And at that point, their rate of infection dropped in half within two weeks of beginning to use it. And those rates have continued to remain low and manageable because they used it. And, you know, it's not that you can go to the store and get it. Doctors do know dosing. We do how to know to give an appropriate medication People who call this horse medicine, they're idiots. Just because your doctor gives you some Benadryl and in a different setting gives your cat some Benadryl, does it make it cat medicine? No, it's just Benadryl. So if you take human grade Benadryl in an appropriate dose, you're safe. Equally, if you take human grade prescribed by a doctor, Ivermectin, you're perfectly safe. Oh, and by the way, you won't die of COVID. You're welcome for the truth, and I'm going to share one very important truth that we all got to learn of today if we were looking on our cell phones yesterday or our televisions today. Yesterday, Sweden banned the viral treatment, the mRNA treatment, the vaccines for children 5 to 11. Children 5 to 11. It wasn't a political decision. It wasn't a crowd making the decision. This is the most serious scientists of Sweden deciding that the risks to children are so high compared to the minimal assistance of getting the vaccine. In fact, the approximate ratio is there's a hundred children that have to get significantly ill from the vaccine to prevent one child from getting COVID. Well, in any case, that's all the news I've got for you. I really praise Sweden for stepping forward and making it illegal and wrong and impossible for a child 12 and under to receive this vaccine. I expect Sweden to change it so that even 17 and below is stopped within the next two weeks. It's just too damaging. In conclusion, I just want to say that you all have the rights to your employment. You have the rights to cross between borders. You have the rights to be safe, but you also have the right to decide what goes into your body.
one more page. Hang in with me. I guess my final point is, and it's certainly not about vaccines, it's simply about that the pandemic can be over in a couple of weeks. We can stop the most dangerous mandate. The most dangerous mandate was not the mandates of the last six months. The most dangerous mandate was the mandate of 18 months ago. The mandate of 18 months ago that prevented me from a doctor from giving a safe, normal couple of medications that would reduce someone's infection time from 14 days down to three or four. And you know what? If you can keep it down to days three and four, instead of 14, they don't get to day 14 because we all know what happens after that. Day 14 and beyond, you're in the ICU and that's it. So, therapeutics could have been in place, should have been in place, but it doesn't stop it from starting now. You can write the Canadian Medical Association. You can write the colleges of all the doctors in Canada. You can write the Canadian Pharmacy Association, which has cooperated with the other agencies to prevent doctors. I only wanted to do one thing a year and a half ago. I wanted to cure a few patients. I wanted to save a few patients. And the medical agencies prevented it. God bless you.